Hi, Reverend Nina here. I'd like to share with you a segment about angelic intuition and the human design system, or what we at Angels Teach refer to as the angelic blueprint. Your angelic intuition is a very powerful sense that is unique to you. It expresses itself in a way that is very personal and very individualized. So you may have clairvoyance that overlaps very uh, much like a co-student or a friend that you have, but how it actually works is going to be a little bit different for you. Even if you notice the same kinds of signs, the repeating numbers, uh, the dreams, the animals, all of that may seem the same, how that actually happens is different because your energetic expression, again, is unique to you. So I've invited my dear husband, Peter, to join me uh, in teaching you this because it's really his area of expertise. So what we're going to do is to go through the nine centers of the human design chart and any other aspects that Peter believes to be relevant uh, with respect to the chart and talk about how uh, that design could um, really impact your, your angelic intuition. So, ready to begin? I'm ready to begin. All right. So, um, I'd like to start, I have to warn you guys that there's, there's a flying cat around the, around the room that seems to be insistent on being in our, our video today. Um, anyway, we're going to start with the open head, which is the triangle at the top of the chart. And the open head is the center for ideas and inspirations. And they might want to pause the video if you don't happen to have your chart with you. Pause the video, come back, um, it'll help you follow along. Good idea. So, um, with that said, Peter, what about the uh, head center relates to angelic intuition and angel communication? Well, the head center is all about ideas and inspiration. And so if your head center is, is white, is undefined, and we're going to focus on the, undef the centers being undefined in this because any undefined center can pick up the energy around you and amplify it. So with the head center, ideas and inspiration that is around you is going to be something that you will pick up and amplify. So if you're, um, if you're doing a reading, for example, and you have an open head, you need to be a little bit careful that you're not mentally, being focused too mentally and picking up on the ideas of the person you're reading for. Um, and basically telling them what they want to hear. Um, so it, it, with the head, it can really go both ways. You can be very intuitive and pick up on ideas and inspirations out there in the universe. Um, but if you're very focused with the client and, and in their energy field, which is probably six to eight feet around their body, you can be picking up what they want to hear. And could that happen on the phone as well? It can happen on the phone, sure. You have an energetic connection. I think it's going to be less, uh, it'll be a, a lower presence than if, like Nina and I, we're both in our, each other's energy fields now. Um, but yeah, it could happen on the phone. Um, just set your intention, and that will help. Set your intention that, you know, I want ideas and inspiration from the universe, and I don't want just to pick up what the person wants to hear. Right. And throughout this segment, it's really all about staying in your phone booth, um, the phone booth that we refer to as, you know, that phone booth with the angels, where you're communicating just with the angels and really no other energies. So that's a, a visual that I like to use to help you remember to stay encapsulated in that communication that is just with the angels and not with any other um, distracting energies. So again, just to reiterate, to make sure you guys are clear, that we're talking just about the openness in your chart, in your blueprint, just the white areas. Because if you're defined, and if your head, the top triangle, is colored in, I forget what color it is, but... Green. Um, green? So if you... I thought that was the ajna. No, that's the ajna. Yeah. <laughs> well, neither of us, you can tell, have open heads or ajnas, or have defined heads or ajnas. Anyways, if the triangle at the top is colored in and it's not white, then you really don't um, need to be concerned about this because your energy is really 
of your own and you're not going to be at risk for um, picking up on other people's ideas and inspirations. So the next center we're going to talk about is the one that's just down from the head center and that's the triangle pointing down at the top and that is called the Ajna Center and that is about thought processing and knowledge and how does that relate Peter? Well it, it, it's about thoughts, it's about processing thoughts, um, it's about thinking um, and it, it also carries into doing, uh, how you do things, the process that you build around things, even simple things like um, washing the dishes or that kind of thing. So in terms of intuition, um, if you have a white center in the Ajna, uh, you're going to be empathetic to uh, different, picking up on different ways to do things. And Likewise, if your client has a defined ajna, um, it's colored in, uh, they may have some resistance um, to the way you suggest they do things, especially if you're, if you're do, working as a coach. Um, there may be some resistance to change in process, um, and it may take more time. But in, in terms of empathy and intuition, it's really about picking up on process, picking up on uh, thinking patterns, as opposed to the idea, this is more of the thinking pattern. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. And the next center we're going to talk about is the throat center, the area of communication, which is really sort of thought of as the, the, the mecca for um, human design, isn't it? Well, the throat is really where it all comes together because in the human design system, um, in a way it's like a channel of rivers and in this case the river the fluid in the river is energy and all energy wants to reach the throat to be expressed and the throat is representative of expression and so most commonly people will think of speaking or singing but really the throat represents any form of expression so my hand gesture um, the way I dress, or this flamboyant scarf here. Um, it's my open throat. It's her open, wear bright color. open throat. That, uh, and you will see that people that have open throats will wear flamboyant things to draw attention to them so that they can be recognized to speak. The open throat, in terms of intuition, is going to be empathetic to that voice. Probably more likely to the voice that can't be heard the expression that, that's there but is not getting out. So in terms of your reading or your coaching, um, if you have an open throat, be aware of those things that are coming in that uh, may be signs that are hesitant and part of that hesitant may be that, that that's a thing, um, it, I'm thinking of the Harry Potter thing, the, the, the person who can't be named with Voldemort if you've <laughs> if you've read the series, it may be the idea or the thought that can't be voiced. And, and that, could, that could carry some baggage and that may be why it's not being voiced. Or it could be that um, the person you're dealing with has an open throat and they haven't been able to express that because nobody's given them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the openness of the throat is, is yet another reason why it's so important for any reader or coach angel communication specialist to be very uh, aware of listening to their clients because many people really do feel unheard. I would say maybe even an epidemic in our society of people feeling unheard. So, well, and, and, and there's, there's so much out there that I guess I would call noise. There's so much communication that, that doesn't have, it's not the voice of the soul. Right. that is just sort of white noise that suppresses that voice of the soul in you and me and everyone else. Kind of like the commercials that we get to fast forward through with DVR, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay, the next uh, area that we're going to talk about, the center is the G or the identity center, which is if it's colored in, it's a yellow triangle. Uh, more or less in the middle of your chart, and otherwise, obviously, if it's open, it's white. So how does the open G, one of my favorite centers, um, relate to angelic intuition, Peter? Well, as Nina said, the G center is all about identity and about the self, and it's the G center is really the voice of the soul. 
um, or the expression of the soul that's trying to make it to make it to expression. And if you have an open G in your chart, you are going to be very wise about your clients. Just, in, in fact, I would suggest when you sit down with your client, especially in the first couple of minutes, um, if, if you can get a little bit of quiet time, just to sort of read where they're at. With an open G, you will have a sense of of how they're doing in terms of the identity. Are they feeling confident? Um, are they, you know, are they very unsure of themselves? Are they lost? Uh, you will have the sense of of what they feel their identity is uh, just by having that open center. Mm -hmm. Which certainly will play into a reading, um, especially if the reading is intended to be more of a, a healing as opposed to um, just a run of the mill reading. So, if there is, is there such a thing as a run of the mill reading? <laughs> uh, that's... I don't think so. <laughs> um, anyway, the next center we're going to talk about is the will center, which is to the right and down a little bit from the G or the identity center. And the will is also known as the heart center. It is a red triangle if it's defined and white, obviously, if it's open. The will center is about willful energy. Um, it is that edgy, I, I really like the term edgy when it comes to will energy. If somebody is pushing to try to make something happen, try to get something done, then you can feel it. I think whether you're defined or undefined, you can feel that willful push. And all of us probably know somebody um, in our lives that, that essentially operates on a, that strategy of getting things done through willpower. If you have an open will center, you're going to be able to get a sense of how much your client is pushing with that will, or you know, not even just the client in your in your relationships, how much they're pushing. You also can get a sense of whether they feel they're worthy, um, because the will center is also about worthiness, and you may get a sense that that. The person you're working with undervalues themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or is full of it and overvalues themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, the main information you're going to get from the Will Center. And the other, the other thing to keep in mind too, I think, with the Will Center is just when you're setting rates for yourself, if you choose to do angel reading and coaching as a profession, um, you know, just being mindful that if you have an open Will Center, that you make sure that you're valuing your services well enough and that you're charging fees that are fair to you as well as to your clients. Uh, the other one thing that keeps coming into my mind um, about the, the Will Center is if you have um, an open head, an open ajna, and you're reading somebody's mind and they have a Will Center and they're really pushing their agenda because I have had, you know, readings where people really want to tell you the answer. They want to really force what the angels are wanting to relay to you. So it's almost like, well, the angels want me to do this, right? And They're looking for an affirmation as opposed to an exactly. objective reading. Exactly. And if they have a will center and you have an open will center and they're really pushing that, you have to be mindful that you know, you're again in that phone booth and that you're centered and that you're grounded and that whatever information that the angels have um, that needs to come through you is able to come through you without undue influence from, um, you know, pushy, and not intentionally so necessarily, but, you know, energy that pushes a little bit too much. So, will center is an interesting one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the next center we're going to talk about is the solar plexus, which is on the right side, on the lower lower half of your, your chart. And it's, I believe, brown if it's colored in and uh, white if it's open. The solar plexus is the center for emotions. And if you have an undefined solar plexus, you will most likely be influenced by your client's emotion if they're emotionally defined. So. In a, in a positive note, you can have a good reading of where they're at. Are they up, joyful, 
or are they down, sadness or despair. The thing I think you need to be cautious about is as you're giving the reading, um, if you're telling them something that they, they want to hear or they've been waiting to hear, their excitement grows and the potential's there for your excitement to grow with them and that can lead you astray. Again, as Nina said, back to the phone booth. Um, you, with an undefined emotional center, want to maintain sort of that neutral neutrality and um, not get carried away by their emotional state. And that excitement you're referring to can either be, you know, positive or negative. It could exactly. be anger, it could be happiness. And, and your job as the reader, as the coach, is to really stay centered and to keep your emotions um, really in a place of balance. And that's a good point because if, if, for example, you're telling them something they've been avoiding dealing with and uh, so they're getting angry and you might get this feeling, I can't, I can't tell them any more about this, but it, it may serve the purpose for them to hear that because they really need to push through that healing aspect. Um, and their their energy is trying to dissuade you from that. Right, right, right. And it's important to, again, be the instrument for the angels and always have that first and foremost on your mind and, and in your head. So, um, The next center we're going to talk about is the spleen center, which is on the opposite side of the solar plexus. It's brown and it's on the left side. And um, it is the center for intuition, and I would say survival-based intuition, because certainly all of the centers have intuitive um, characteristics, but this is the survival-based intuition, as well as the immune system and the sense of time. With the open spleen, you're going to have, first of all, because it's connected to the immune center, you're going to have a sense of how healthy is this person you'll be able to feel, um, is this person struggling health-wise? Um, is this person feeling down energetically? Um, is this person robust and really teeming with life? Secondly, the spleen center is about knowing in the now. So with an open spleen, you have the potential to um, really intuit quick hits that you might get a flash of something and that you should bring that forward because it's a knowingness in the now that you're basically amplifying from the person that you're working with. But that's going to depend on how they're defined, isn't it? It's going to depend on how they're defined, but I think energetically, whether, they're, whether they have a defined spleen or not, you're going to get some knowingness in the now based on the energy that's going around mm -hmm. between the two of you. Mm -hmm. Right. I think a point to bring up here actually is, you know, if, if, you're, if, if you're dealing with two people and, uh, and just two people and there's no other, other people in the room, meaning no other energy fields to interact with, and you have two open centers interacting, it's not as though there's a void. I mean, because there's, there's energy that's conditioned and there's energy that um, has been learned, if you will, throughout life's experience. So just because you have an open spleen doesn't mean that every morning you wake up with a clean slate. It means that you, you carry forward what you had yesterday, unless you've done some work to, to release anything that's, that's dragging you down. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I'd say, if you have an open spleen, you may want to be cautious about uh, your timing for appointments, um, because Open spleens tend to lose track of time and to be yourself uh, that you don't have a 30 minute appointment that goes for an hour or an hour appointment that goes for 90 minutes that you, um, you know, wear a watch or have, a, have an alarm on your watch or some mechanism that you basically can treat yourself fairly on that. So next we're going to talk about the sacral center, which is the second square up from the bottom, and that is really the, the main motor in the body, the main engine, if you will. This, if you have an open sacral center, then you are going to be wise about 
the energy that the client is bringing and this is it's a different flavor than the health energy this is this is physical energy this is energy to do things so if you have a client that's really worn out by their daily routine then you will feel that if you have a a client that's uh, a 24 7 workout junkie then you're gonna feel that and it may actually energize you as well with an open sacral center you really need to structure your time wisely because you don't have a source of continuous energy and so in terms of appointments you're not necessarily going to want to do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back appointments um, because you just won't have the same energy for the third appointment that you would if you did an appointment, had an hour to take a walk, rest, and then take, took the next appointment. Right, right. Very important to, again, manage your energy and to, to use it to the best of its ability. Uh, that's why you were designed that way and it is perfect. So the last center we're going to talk about in this segment is the root center, which is at the bottom of your chart. It's a brown square if it's colored in, and it's white if it's open. And the root center is all about adrenaline energy. This cat. You apparently have a cat with a lot of adrenaline energy. This cat is a very willful <laughs> and adrenaline creature. Um, the root center is really, uh, it's often referred to as the pressure center. and it's it's really like the gas pedal in a car and so when when you push on the gas pedal you dump all this gas into the engine uh, likewise with the root center when there's something to do a task list or a task to be done then it dump, dumps adrenaline into the physical body and tries to get that to happen if you have an open root the adrenaline gets dumped into the body, but there's not necessarily a path way to take to get the task done. So it can be a little bit frustrating. If you have an open route in terms of intuition, um, you're going to be able to assess how your client is, is at in terms of getting things done. Um, you'll have a sense of whether they're really struggling or whether they've got um, you know whether they've got the energy to to get it done and you may feel under more pressure to give a good reading if you have if you've got somebody with a defined root center that you're doing the reading for because their root energy is gonna jazz up your root and cause that adrenaline to dump in your system and that adrenaline immediately creates physical pressure that Oh, I've you know I've got to get this done. I've got to get it done on time, and and it's got to be good. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Peter, is there any other aspect of the chart that you feel needs to be discussed or highlighted with respect to again angel communication or the angelic intuition? Well, I think that uh, really any of the open gates or center, uh, open gates or channels, as well as the centers that we already talked about, can be intuitive. You can, you can be empathetic for that particular characteristic of a gate or a channel. So, as you, as you may know, there's 64 gates within the system, and they all have attributes about them. Uh, things like uh, opinions or correction, joy to life, uh, contagiousness, depth, uh, investigation, uh, listening, all those aspects um, are in the individual gate. So you might find that you're particularly good at one or more of those. And it may be that the reason that you're good at those, in terms of the, again, in terms of intuition, the reason you're good at those, at picking up that somebody's a good listener, is because that particular gate in your chart is open and so you have that intuitive ability to pick that up in people because you don't have your own definition for it so it's it's open to receive that energy when it when it comes into that energy right right and just 
In case you're not aware, the gates and the channels are the lines that connect the nine centers that we just reviewed. So a gate is half a channel, and you put two gates together and you have a full channel. Those are the lines connecting the centers. Um, and those, as you will see on your chart, are either white or they're colored in with either black or red. So is there any other aspect that you feel needs to be mentioned? With respect um, to angel communication. I mean, <laughs> we're just really uh, addressing the tip of the iceberg here because as I'm sure you can imagine, human, human beings are rather complex creatures and there is a lot behind the angelic blueprint and, and human design. It, so. it is just the tip of the iceberg. I'd say that one other attribute um, that you may want to look at in terms of in intuition is your profile. Um, your profile is really uh, when you look at the description of the, the profile, and that's the two numbers down at the bottom of your chart, um, there's two numbers and a couple of words, and it really describes the characteristics of how you go about things. So the profile numbers range from one to six. Um, if you're a one, then you're very investigative. If you're a two, it's called the hermit, and it takes you some time. So in terms of intuition, if you're a second line profile, you may not get everything right on the spot. You may have some information that comes in and with your, with your client, you can't really express it. And you go home and you're alone for a little while and you, oh, now I know what I wanted to say to them. So if you're a second line, if you have a second line in your profile, you may want to think about a mechanism to follow up with your clients that you know, that you just have, you send them an email, or you send them a, a handwritten card, said, this came in after the reading, some, some mechanism like that. Because that's going to happen to you more often than somebody like Nina that's a 1-3 profile. She doesn't have that second line. She doesn't, she doesn't need that time for that information to, to come in. Third line is experimental. And so, if you're third line, you may experiment with how the information's coming in with how you format your readings. A fourth line um, is a networker and it's, it's, it has a foundation to it that really involves the network. So you may find that um, you always need to do the readings in, in your house or in the same place. Um, you also will find that you're probably going to get your readings through people you know as opposed to taking an advertisement out in, a, in Spirit of Change or another publication. Fifth line is projective. Um, I'd say with the fifth line, fifth lines are here to make change and if you're a fifth line you may meet more resistance when you give your readings because your energy comes on a little bit stronger and people may have the reaction, whoa, you know, not that, I'm not going to do that. And so you may you may have that experience that they're they're backing off a little bit. You also may want to be cautious about your proximity to them because your energy projects out. You may have to sit a little bit further than normal from them, you know, than from somebody else that doesn't have a fifth line. And then lastly, sixth line, uh, in terms of intuition, um, sixth line is really uh, over time build up their wisdom and become a role model, become the sage on the hill. So the sixth line, you're really going to be looking for them to ask you the follow-up questions as opposed to expounding upon, expounding upon detail upon detail. Good. Awesome. So again, uh, just hitting the tip of the iceberg here with respect to uh, the angelic blueprint human design and I do encourage you to learn as much as you can learn about yourself learn about how you interact with others about how you process things about how your energy can be as successful as it can possibly be because the more that you know about your energy and how it works the more you will experience a life that is more fulfilling absolutely so, uh, thank you for joining me for this segment here today, Peter. It's been and, my pleasure. Yeah, and thank you everyone for listening. And uh, I do encourage you again to learn more. You can uh, get more information on Peter's website, which is loveyourhumandesign.com. 
and uh, we're here to help you, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Blessings of love to you. We love you. Have a nice day.